I mean, I'm about to put you on camera, but I don't know. People are gonna be like, you neglecting that boy? No, he neglects himself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with Isaac. What do you want your background to be? Um, I think the word background. Okay. Was, uh, personally, uh, we went up there, the wind was extraordinary. It was strong, gusting, it was powerful. And the nature, it was, it was really extremely, it was extremely quiet. You got to focus in on what we were there to do, the rituals we were there to do, the um, things we were there to learn, the new experiences we were there to have. Um, also, my my um, my reading came up as. Which means I need to learn to uh, release stress in that. Isaac, Isaac. Say it right. Yeah. Got it now. <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> My last day, I go back to San Antonio tonight. Had a great time here. These great bunch of men. Had a great time. Learned a lot. Feel re-energized and ready to go for the season when I go back. You see the things that he does? My fault, my fault. Because he can't focus. This is what the reading said. Focus on one thing at a time. You're looking over there. What's over there? I looked to duck. All right, plane's coming by. Give a little pause. Oh, no, he's a director. You know, uh, Brother Isaac, you know, uh, had an opportunity to kind of um, explore some of the ideas that uh, are surrounding his life right now. And I just wanted to, you know, um, mention that, of course, he's uh, Brother Byron's youth because uh, it's important that as we're, we're teaching these sciences and we're continuing them, that we don't allow them to age out. And if we can't make them relevant to the next generation, then they die. You know, so uh, the type of information or experience that I may have with uh, Brother Byron, who is in my own age class, I may not necessarily have with his youth or with my youth. You know, so it's important to maintain uh, the relevancy of the actual work that we're doing, okay? Yeah, he's not gonna get out the shot. That's just what he does. He doesn't feel comfortable unless he's gotta have the light on him. He's gotta be on you at all times. Yeah. Leo's. Um, okay, so the, the, the reading. Does the higher energy and the uh, presence of the wind and the sun make it more accurate or more precise or did it, have, did it have any effect? It had an effect on us as, as, as people and our energy, but did it have an effect on the reading itself? Well, the reading always comes from you. Okay. So if I'm doing a reading, I'm actually just having a conversation with you. Okay. But I'm having a conversation with you at a space where it's more pure. So it's just like right now we're speaking and you can hear my voice, I can hear your voice. That's one level of communication. Uh, and then we may be sharing certain mental waves at the same time. That's another level of communication. If I say, hey, you know what I mean? This physical, that's another level of communication. So, the, so there's different layers. So when I'm doing a reading, my soul at the soul level is speaking to your soul. You see, that's very difficult to do, if not impossible, in this form. You see, so always the information comes from you but it's like when you go to see a doctor and you say, I think I have something in the middle of my back. You can't see it, you can't touch it, but you know it's there. So, you know, it's not a thing where you would just say, well, if it's coming for me, I could just read myself. Not necessarily, because very rare, and very rarely in life do any of us actually ever really truly see ourselves. You know, see ourselves for what we are. So, being in that altitude and in that space, what it did create was, um, a more sacredness of experience because after all the climbing and everything like that you're already in a different zone mm -hmm. you already know well i'm not in the city anymore i'm you know i'm not here i'm not there so you you know you're out of your element which causes you to lose some of your ego because when you're in a space where you're most comfortable with you you already you know one of the biggest things that kill our growth is the i already knew that spirit mm -hmm. okay you know you that grow. Think you know. Nah, and so often when I'm talking to people, like even on the shows or whatever, I'll, I'll break something down 
and then their immediate response is, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Or, you know, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So basically you're saying, as soon as I hear somebody say, so basically you're saying, I know they didn't get a thing that I just said because they're immediately trying to minimize it into something that they think they already know. So when you take someone out of their element, bring them up to a mountaintop, and nature has a, has a way of silencing us. So on top of that mountain, it's like, just like when Isaac said he, when he came here, the first thing he did, like, you know, he was sitting here quiet the whole time while y'all were, of course, playing. But um, he did the same thing when we were on the mountain. He just meditated because nature has a way of silencing you like nothing else, you know. He can't help it, that's, that's what he does. You see, I know you want him to get up, but that's just what he does. Why? You're on my knee. Okay. You put a weight on me, okay? He doesn't care. So anyway, yeah, so when you're in that environment, it silences you. So uh, even when I'm speaking or sharing information, it has a way of silencing the listener so you truly become receptive in a natural environment, like right here, right now. If we were in the city somewhere, you might be looking around and saying, oh, what if one of my friends walks by? What are they gonna say? What are they, what are they thinking? I have to put up a certain image, things like that, you know? But here, there's a certain freeness that comes. Wow. An amazing view. Now looking over all of, and uh, we went up, did some, uh, some meditating at first, uh, some rituals. Uh, up there, because we're closer to the sun, we can feel, feel the heat more and the wind is greater, so you can, you can hear more, you can take more in. So that's why we went so high. And uh, my, my Odu was... Uh, um, so it was about me accepting graduation and having people around me that accept my accept my kingdom and, and not letting uh, exterior uh, influences affect me and, and what I'm trying to do. So I, I learned a lot up there and it's something that I'll remember for a very long time. Beautiful. All right, so tell us about your experience, your lengthy and um, strong experience. Turn to the camera, please. Well, it was good. Um, I didn't get everything I expected. I went to see a bear, but you can't always get what you want in life, so that was all right. I, I, we didn't see a bear. Um, we climbed up to the mountain. It was very cold up there. The wind, there was not much some sunshine. And then we went to, we were doing rituals, and um, I got, the old me has to die in order for the new me to be reborn. So, uh, and then we went to, we, we, we did that, we, we took that, that first step by, uh, you know, getting closer to the, the ledge. You know, uh, I felt a bowel movement coming on as I stepped closer to that ledge, but uh, I held it in, and I held it in my tears. But uh, I was very scared, but I had, you know, these three brothers with me to make sure that I was safe, even though um, without them, I'm sure, my pants were brown instead of black. But I appreciate them, I appreciate Baba for um, helping me take that step and um, we went out to eat afterwards.